Hey friends, greetings and salutations. Come to you from the driver's seat of the 2013 Malibu. And um, this is this video is kind of going to be a, a follow up to some questions that I've gotten recently um, from a video I made a while back about uh, some electrical gremlins that were uh, presenting themselves in the most peculiar way. What was happening at that time was the instrument cluster and the infotainment system along with the electric power steering would go off if I was they would they would shut off if I was making a left hand turn and someone was sitting in the passenger seat you want to see how I resolve that issue um, go up here and watch that video it's a really simple fix it involves a zip tie and a seat adjustment it's it's a stupid simple and if you do that fix it'll probably fix your uh, your issue if you're infotainment system your power steering is failing and maybe even get in a stall situation making a turn to the left if i did that fix and it resolved most of our issues except for the the instrument cluster would intermittently fail now it didn't affect drivability at all um but i wasn't getting any information from my gauges the only thing that did work on the instrument cluster was the check engine light and i'm almost wondering if maybe the check engine light wasn't illuminated because the gauges weren't working but I've since replaced the instrument cluster, and I want to show you how simple of a fix this is. In fact, it's so simple and takes so little time that I actually unfixed it and put the old broken instrument cluster in just to show you how easy it is to do this. Now, when it comes to your instrument cluster, you've got a couple of options available to you. If you can wait a couple of weeks, you can pull the instrument cluster out and send it off to a company. I'll annotate it here where they'll repair it and get it back working again. Usually it's, you know, there's so much circuitry in these uh, instrument clusters that, you know, all it takes is a time and excessive heat or excessive cold and one of those solder joints is gonna break and uh, your, your instrument cluster will stop working. So one option is to send it off and have it repaired. I can't afford to have a car down for two weeks, so I opted to buy a new gauge cluster so I bought a new instrument cluster from an online retailer and uh, told my wife it'll be here in a couple of days. And a few weeks went by and she says, hey, are you ever going to get that instrument cluster? So we looked into it and it turned out that um, they didn't have any and they canceled the order and just neglected to tell me. That was mighty nice of them. And when I went to go try to reorder, they were no longer available. So so I went on to eBay and I found a used one. Now, it's important that you at least take the instrument cluster out and get the correct part number when you're doing a search for a replacement because um, there's, a sell there's a couple of sellers on eBay that are selling brand new instrument clusters and they say they're compatible, but they're not. They're selling them around 50 bucks. I bought one and it didn't work. They're actually for a hybrid or a uh, an eco model. They won't they won't work. The information screen that comes up here is totally different, and there's no way to make that uh, instrument cluster work with this particular model. I have an LT. I think it's an LT. But anyway, take the part number that's on the instrument cluster and use that in your search. I found one on eBay. It's a, an auto recycler and you know they showed it pictures of it working so i knew it worked but this is our old one let me show you keys on you see the uh check engine lights got on the entertainment systems booting up nothing no no gauges at all and it, it is plugged in so you know our instrument cluster one day you know would, go, would come on and go off and come on and go off and then one day it just shut off and never came back on so it's kind of important especially you know if you're running along with fuel you need to know how much fuel you have and if you don't have any gauges you don't know and consequently the uh the low fuel alarm won't work if your instrument cluster is not operational once you've procured your, your new instrument cluster, now you need to put it in. Now, you could pay somebody to put it in. And if you take it to a dealership, they're going to charge you 100 bucks an hour. And it's only going to take 
them 10 minutes to do if you know how to do it it's really simple everything in this dash can be pulled apart relatively easy first thing you do is you grab this piece of trim pull it back ever so slightly and then if you reach underneath here you need to disconnect this connector just reach in there pull the little tab back you push this little tab right here this tab right here you push that back and the uh, the headlight switch comes off and then over on this side you need to get underneath here either with a trim tool or your fingernail pull that off next you grab this pull it out and then you have a screw here a screw here one up in there one up in there seven millimeter that's what they look like and then you pull the instrument cluster out and right here there's another tab on the connector that the cluster plugs into you pull that out take your cluster out and uh, you're golden putting your new cluster in is just as easy it's just the reverse of that Plug your harness in. All right, and next is the uh, the gauge bezel. All right, next is this little trim piece, and next is the headlight switch. Get to plug the electrical connector in before you put this in otherwise your headlight switch won't work done look at that now what you will have to do is bring this to a dealership or a mechanic that has the proper uh, um, hardware and software to program this dash to your car's VIN number. Until that happens, you won't have an odometer, but everything else works. Unfortunately, this seems to be a problem with GM vehicles when they get up there in an age a little bit. This has been a pretty dependable car for us. We had our first electrical failure was this, which isn't really a gear shifter. It's just a electrical switch that tells the transmission what gear you want it to be in. And there's it's basically a sensor, and that sensor failed. That happened under warranty. I don't know if I made a video on that or not. I don't think I did. And then, uh, you know, a couple of other issues uh, the uh, variable valve timing uh, solenoids are replaced those you know all that stuff happened after a hundred thousand miles but if you stay on top of the stuff it can get expensive you need to look for alternatives but they can be had so if you found this video to be helpful I appreciate it very much if you'd slam that like button and share this video with your vast social media network hey if you haven't done so yet 
consider subscribing. And if you do, click that bell icon. That way YouTube will let you know next time I upload a video. If you'd like to support this channel financially, check the links in the description for, for uh, products you might see in these videos or the gear they use to make the videos. And uh, if you want to throw me a couple of bucks, there's a PayPal link. And if you want to support this channel on a monthly basis, there's a Patreon link all down in the description. If you can afford to do that, thank you in advance. If you can't, don't worry about it. It just means we're probably related. So until next time, you have fun, stay safe, shoot straight, keep your powder dry. Have a splendid day. Wrench on. Later. Bye.